So let's take a look at how this fits in uh, with the overall scheme of things. Uh, this slide uh, we have seen uh, in the past uh, in the first lecture where we tried to give an overview of uh, things to come. So uh, this was our pro problem statement. Uh, we want to design or build a system and we know its properties, its input, its response, its input output model, uh, system capacity and we have knowledge or we have definition of failure uh, in terms of response exceeding capacity and then we know the uncertainties involved and we are able to make computations estimate failure probability then we can take decisions uh, and hopefully standardize the process so uh, the point to note here uh, and what we are trying to do in today's lecture is what I have in red how to define failure so that would be one of the key steps in setting up the reliability problem uh, instead of an intact system that you see on the slide uh, if I had uh, a damage system uh, I would probably have a different uh, interest in failure a different definition uh, of failure uh, instead of uh, an elongation, an excessive elongation limit state, I would probably uh, have a fracture limit state. And the fracture limit state I could describe in terms of crack size, uh, meaning that the crack size exceeds a limiting value, a critical crack size, or uh, the stress intensity factor exceeds uh, the fracture toughness. Uh, I could be interested in both of them and failure would be defined in terms of uh, either or so a series event as you see uh, on the on the screen so um, what would be uh, the key steps in that that red marked uh, item that definition of failure because that's the physics based definition of failure that's the physics based reliability problem and that is a, a key step in setting up a problem in reliability and structural reliability in particular so uh, here are the key steps. Uh, first, I need to be able to define the system uh, and its behavior. So in this particular case, the example that we have been talking about uh, that you see on the, on the screen on the left is an elastic cable uh, that needs to carry a specified load. Uh, then I need to define its performance objective or objectives. Uh, which in this case is that the cable must carry uh, the applied load with small elongation so it must not suffer a large elongation so that's my performance objective so the cable must carry the load and it should elongate within limits so the next thing to define would be the limits of satisfactory performance in this case it's one-sided that elongation just an example that elongation is at most L by 1000. Once I am able to define those, then I need to identify the relevant system properties that would let me impose that condition uh, of satisfactory performance. So the system properties, uh, the inputs, uh, the response or responses of interest, and how to connect them together. See. Uh, um, uh, all, all probabilistic information and how to connect them together through the input output model. So that would be my finite element model uh, for a larger structure. Uh, then the next important step that would be express failure condition making use of all the things that I have done above. So express failure in terms of system capacity or capacities uh, and system responses as a precise mathematical statement which involves one or more inequalities uh, in this case just one uh, for each performance objective so these would be the key steps in setting up a reliability problem solving it estimating probability taking decisions etc they come later in today's a lecture or objective is 
to understand these key steps and go through some examples of how to set up such a problem.